How's it going guys? This is Ryo Murata, photographer based in Tokyo. Glad you guys are watching my video. It is my pleasure. <laughs> so lots to talk about and lots to discuss and lots to shoot. Where to start? One of the particular questions came into my head like two weeks ago or like one week ago. And I thought like, what's the cheapest like medium format film in Tokyo as of 2021? I did my research and came upon that the Fuji Films NS160 you guys probably heard maybe not due to the fact that the Pro 400H has been discontinued and I am still on that journey to look for all their alternatives. I came upon the Fujifilm's Pro NS160. Long story short, for a lot of people who don't know much about this film stock, it is actually the cheapest film stock for medium format film that you can purchase in Japan. In Japan. Keep that in mind. In Japan. Wait. But what's interesting is oh my my camera just turned off. <laughs> okay, it's on. So where was I? <laughs> what's interesting is that if you actually research like what's the cheapest like film stock in the North America, if I'm right, the cheapest one color negative wise, it's probably the Ektar 100, which go for they actually they actually increase the price to like thirty from thirty nine dollars to i think it's 41 42 dollars right now and same for the ns160 it's actually the retail price is roughly 40 dollars so it's actually the by far those two are the cheapest films whether or not if you live in north america it's ektar 100 if you live in japan the cheapest one is the ns160 yeah so keep in mind that this is not a professional grade if i'm right it's more like a consumer oriented type of like film their like professional lineup remember is the 400h the pro 160 although it says it's pro it's more aimed at like consumers actually and it is an iso rated at 160 and probably the majority of you guys who use this film will shoot it at iso 100 me included because it's like it's hectic to sort of calculate one stop above iso 160 so and you guys know that film tends to perform better when you over overexpose your like shots so in my case I would shoot this film at ISO 100 and the characteristics of this like film is that similar to most like Fujifilm film stocks it has neutral color tones wide exposure stabilities and according to their website it says fine grain quality which I am skeptical on and it's interesting to note that this NS160 will not be discontinued while the Pro 400H is being discontinued, which is confusing in my mind. So I don't know why they're not like discontinuing this one in particular. So that's just one question. Enough with ranting about this film. This time around, where did I shoot? I went out to a location called Takebashi Pier, aka Takebashi Terminal in English words, along with Hinode Pierre, they're basically adjacent to each other. Just keep note that Takebashi Pierre and Hinode Pierre is kind of connected, so you can actually like stroll around and like look at the really nice like sort of like Bay Area. And why you look, and why choose this location you ask? Because this is actually one of the locations where you can actually ride a cruise speedboat to the islands of Tokyo. And you were, and you guys might have been thinking, but Tokyo's this area, right? Nuh uh uh. Did you know that these like islands around this area is also belongs to the Tokyo prefecture? So, and in order to like access these locations, you basically have to ride a speedboat from this terminal to these like, like what you call random like location, random like islands that I never been to. And at the same time, you can actually fly there, but it's just hectic. So in most cases, in most cases, most people actually like choose to ride uh like a ferry a boat speedboat or i don't know there's a lot of like variations and you can do a lot of research to like access these areas but it's actually an interesting like location to check if you have the time and money and effort to go to these areas and it, it's not that far away it's like a couple of hours to maybe a day if you choose the slowest method but i digress but it's actually one of those like terminal like stations where you can basically hop onto a ferry and just like sightsee the wonders of the Tokyo Islands. So 
So I keep getting off topic, but keep in mind that this time around, I went with the Mamiya 645 camera with the 80mm Seco 2.8 lens. But this time around, instead of using the waist viewfinder, I wanted to change it up a little bit. And I actually went ahead and attached the prism viewfinder, which makes the camera freaking heavy. But I just wanted to test to see if this is the better option available than the waist view viewfinder. And at the same time, I just wanted to shoot vertical. So if you want to shoot vertical orientation, the waist viewfinder is not the best method. I mean, you're going to regret yourself, but <laughs> the prism viewfinder is the way to go when you're shooting vertical orientation to unlock the, um, unlock the full potential of the Mamiya 645. So yeah, let's get going then. So Mamiya 645 with the 80mm Seco 2.8 lens with the NS160, NS160 from Fujifilm, media format at Takebashi Pierre, Kino de Pierre, aka Takebashi Terminal. Let's get going.
Okay, so after shooting with this film, I am really happy with the results since it looked really nice in my eyes. And in most cases, if you shoot with a box speed of like 100 to 160, it would look like this if you like it. But in my mind, I like to overexpose my images to give that sort of like pastel look, that washed out look. So, I mean, people have their own like views on images and I personally like my images to look like brighter and more like pastelish. So... And on, on top of that, and when I sort of like post-edited, I only had to add a little bit of green and a little bit of cyan to sort of balance it out. And it actually worked really nice, in my opinion. When you consider this as the cheapest film being sold in Tokyo, it's a bargain, actually. And it's basically probably going to like replace the Pro 400H in the meantime. And at the same time, because it is the cheapest film, it's like $8, $8.3. Per roll, it's going to make me sort of like I could save more money, so kind of. So, I mean, that's a good, it's like a double bonus, you know, you can save money at the same time and like get great images, but at the same time, it is an ISO 160, so it's not like an ISO 400, it's not a really versatile film stock. So, when it gets like partly cloudy, when it gets like darker, I mean, might have some issues shooting with this film. So, in my case, this is going to be my go-to film for shooting really bright sunny environments during midday. Honestly, it's not like the film stock that's the major like factor when you produce really great images. It's more of the lighting scenario, lighting scene. And if you don't have great light, you won't capture great images and vice versa. If you use a crappy like film stock, it's not gonna render that great. So it's like a toss-up, but in my mind, the lighting condition is much more important than the film stock and in this case I think I proved to be right. This film stock is not the most expensive most glorious film stocks out there but because the lighting lighting situation during this day was like really fantastic it produced really nice results so yeah. And at the same time I, because I used the Mamiya's like prison viewfinder I have to give my verdict to that that it is a great like combination the prison viewfinder i mean having the ability to shoot vertical and instead of just stuck with horizontal if you have the waist viewfinder it gives you more possibilities more flexibilities and in my mind using the prison viewfinder will be my sort of like like default setup in my future videos future like projects because i want that versatility of being able to shoot both vertical and horizontal at the same time so that's like another great like thing that I found out during this shoot. And yeah, that's basically it. So if you love this video, please thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave it in the comment section below. I would love to like know what's going on. And at the same time, I'm just kinda I'm kinda curious, like for people living in Europe and Latin America, like what's your like cheapest like film stock for medium format around that area? Because Due to like distribution, due to like supply issues and as of right now, it's like I'm like kind of curious like what's the cheapest film stock in those areas. So if you guys live in those like areas, please leave it in the comments because I'm really curious. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. Peace.